Hello and welcome. Thank you for participating in Moorhead at Home Skywatching, hosted by Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. My name is Amy Sale. I'm an educator at Moorhead. We are a unit of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, located on campus. We also work throughout the state through a number of outreach initiatives like our mobile lab vans, our summer camp programs, and the annual North Carolina Science Festival. Our mission is to help people better understand science, technology, and health, and we do this through engaging learning opportunities like this live virtual event. We're happy to have you here today for our topic eclipses and Nick will get us started. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining us today and welcome back Amy. Um, as you just mentioned, we're going to be talking all about eclipses today. So um, this is something that some of you might have experienced before, some of you might not have um, and I'll tell you before we get into that, um, we're going to show you some images uh, from a really cool website called timeanddate.com and, and from some personal image files we have uh, to help us kind of tell the story of, of an eclipse today. So we won't be using Stellarium as we have in the past, but that's okay. There is a way to simulate eclipses in there, but maybe that'll be for another lesson. Um, if you have questions during this session, I'll tell you now, there's a Q&A box right at the bottom of your screen, uh, and that'll be the best way for you to ask us something, and we'll try to take some time at the end uh, to answer any of your questions. But first, we have a question for you. Um, I mentioned this a moment ago. Have you ever seen an eclipse? Um, and you notice in parentheses there, we say either solar or lunar because there are different types of eclipses. That's part of what we're gonna learn about today. Uh, but we were kind of curious whether y'all have experienced this. So take a moment, uh, you know, answer yes or no or not sure. Not sure is a completely fine answer if you're not sure. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully um, clear that up for you today. And we will, and I noticed we already have a question from Natalie. So shout out to Natalie. You're the reason that we are doing this topic today because you suggested it. So we will definitely be answering your question about what is a solar eclipse. We'll be talking about what eclipses are, the science behind them, and how you can view them. And it looks like, Nick, many people have seen either a solar or lunar eclipse, uh, almost three quarters. Yeah, and so a handful said no. Um, we're going to try our best to set you up today so that you'll be ready uh, when, the, when the next eclipse comes so that you can try to see it. All right, so first off, though I have a story for you all. This is not going to be a science story. I think that will become very evident, but just to get you warmed up. Um, this is a story about eclipses that comes from Korea. It's called the King's Fire Dogs and see if you can figure out how it relates to eclipses before I get to the end. Here's how it goes. In the sky, there are as many countries as on earth. One of these countries is called the land of darkness. The king of this land is always trying to think of ways to bring light to his people. And he keeps, keeps big, mean, ferocious fire dogs. So one day he summoned his biggest, meanest, most ferocious fire dog and he said to it, go steal me the sun. And that dog ran into the sky and it tried to seize the sun in its jaws, but the sun was hot and it couldn't hold on to the sun and it snapped and snapped at it, but it had to spit it out again. And that dog embarrassed ran back to the king with its tail between its legs. The king didn't give up. He just summoned his second biggest, meanest, most ferocious fire dog. And he said to it, go steal me the moon. And that fire dog ran into the sky and it tried to seize the moon in its jaws, but it must have grabbed on the nighttime side of the moon because the moon was cold. It made its teeth sing with pain. It froze its tongue to its mouth and it snapped and snapped at the moon trying to hold on to it, but slowly had to spit it out. And that fire dog ran back to the king with its tail between its legs. But the king hasn't given up. From time to time, he sends a fire dog into the sky to steal the sun or the moon, and you'll see the bite marks whenever there's an eclipse. Okay, so epilogue, that was not a science story, but we will be explaining the science of what causes solar and lunar eclipses. Solar refers to sun, lunar refers to moon, and eclipse means cover up or obscure. And um, I think we've got a, we've got a picture. Here we um, go from an event that happened, some of you will remember this, August 21st, 21, excuse me, 2017. 
So almost three years ago, this is in front of Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. About four to 5,000 people came out that day. And uh, they were there to view a solar eclipse. So we have a question for you all. We want to know if you saw the solar eclipse on Monday, August 21st, 2017. And if you're pretty young right now, you may need to ask your family members the answer to this question. And who knows, maybe some of you that are answering this question are even somewhere in this picture. <laughs> um. Yeah, and you weren't necessarily, you didn't have to come to Chapel Hill to see it. In fact, some of you may have been somewhere else or you may have traveled somewhere else. Um, and this, this was a total solar eclipse, but not for most of North Carolina. Um, I think, Nick, we've got a picture of probably what many people saw. So we'll run through some pictures while you all think about this poll. Um, a picture taken by one of our astronomer friends, Tony Rice. That's a projected image of the sun. And Nick, what do you see in that image? That looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does look weird. It almost even just looks like a tiny crescent moon, but... Really, it's kind of a fun, safe way to view the eclipse uh, without your eclipse glasses. You can create your own projector and, and see how the moon is passing in front of the sun uh, indirectly. So that crescent part, the part that kind of looks like a skinny banana, that's actually the sun being projected onto that white board. And then the, the reason why you don't see the whole circle of the sun is that the moon is covering up most of it. And if you stayed in central North Carolina, Durham, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, um, this is the most of, this is what you would have seen potentially 93% of the sun covered up. You would have seen a partial solar eclipse. And then many of you all might have seen something like this. This is actually looking through tree leaves um, on a sidewalk. Um, Nick, do you see those looks like little crescent suns? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It almost looks like a piece of art, but it's kind of like our trees have created their own little pinhole projector um, as, as the sun was being eclipsed. Yeah, and they, they do this all the way, all the time, by the way. It's just that you don't usually notice unless there's an eclipse, and then you see those impressive looking, impressive looking crescent shapes because of the eclipse, the partial eclipse happening. And then some of you all traveled, or you happen to live somewhere maybe, where the moon completely, totally covered the sun on um, August 21st, 2017. And this is a picture taken by my uncle from Madras, Oregon. And um, that kind of fuzzy stuff around the edges, that's the sun's corona. And if y'all um, joined us last week, Nick and Solomon might have talked about that a little bit. Yeah, the, an eclipse is, is one of the best times to actually get a view of that corona, um, both because um, it's hard to study the sun from here on Earth normally. And if you have your proper safety equipment, you can actually see it um, during that, that eclipse. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I wonder if we have the answers. Oh, sorry, no, we've got another picture. Um, this is, this is actually, I'm in the middle holding Kelvin, the North Carolina Science Festival spokespot, who's also properly equipped. Notice everybody's wearing eclipse glasses. Um, on the left is my cousin Kate, on the right is my stepsister Emily. And if you look in the very back of that picture, it might be hard to see, but we're in Oregon and that is the second tallest mountain in Oregon, Mount Jefferson. And this is taken shortly before um, the partial eclipse was already happening, which is why we're using eclipse glasses, because you cannot look at the sun um, directly. You must use something like eclipse glasses to be able to look at the sun. And um, sh soon after this photo was taken, that mountain disappeared. And it's because the moon's shadow covered it up during the total solar eclipse. And, uh, and then the, it covered us. Oh, and Nick, the poll answers just came up. Yes. And more than half of you all saw the 2017 solar eclipse. And then about a quarter, no. And then some of you aren't just aren't sure if you saw it or not. Okay. And um, so we wanted to show you all a little bit of the geometry of what's happening. So I think we've got a picture for you. This is not to scale. <laughs> These objects, the sun, the moon, the earth, they are not this close together in space. The sun is way bigger than the moon and the earth. But what we wanted to show you is how um, sometimes, this is the configuration, this is the geometry you see when the moon is new. And sometimes when the moon is new, it passes 
directly um, in front of the sun, between earth and the sun, and it can cast a shadow on earth. And that dark inner shadow, the umbra, that is where people will see a total solar eclipse. It'll look like the moon is completely covering the sun. And then um, those outer parts of the shadow, those people are seeing only a partial solar eclipse. So the moon looks like it's taking a bite out of the sun, but not covering up the entire sun. Okay, and you might wonder, well, how can the moon appear to cover the sun if the sun, I mean, the sun is 400 times bigger across than the moon. How could the moon cover up the sun when the sun is so big? And it's because the moon is a whole lot closer to us. Um, 400 times closer. So it happens to be about the same apparent size as the sun in the sky. So it looks like it's about the same, uh, same size, even though in fact, it's the moon is much, much smaller. So it can sometimes cover up the sun if everything lines up just right. Yeah, and we're, we're really lucky to have that alignment. You know, um, sometimes we think about um, planets and moons going around other stars. Um, and it, Eclipses probably happen there too, but they might not be quite as perfect as, as the ones we get here on the Earth. So sometimes I always think about how it's nice that even though the sun and the moon are really, really far apart, the geometry works out so that we can, we can see a really, really beautiful eclipse. Okay, so solar eclipse is when the moon appears to cover the sun. And um, we've actually, if you missed the 2017 US uh, solar eclipse, there's another one coming up. And um, we're going to simulate an eclipse that's happening in four years. <laughs> April 8th, it's another Monday, go figure. And um, it says total solar eclipse because it is a total solar eclipse if you go to the right place. It's actually not a total solar eclipse for Durham or for anywhere in North Carolina. It's a partial solar eclipse. For North Carolina, so we're gonna we're gonna use Durham as our example because time and date has Durham in its database. Uh, if you live anywhere in North Carolina, this is this is essentially what you will see. So um, what we're looking at right now, you see that bright circle, that's the sun, and then Nick is starting the. You can see the moon starting to move in front of it, take, looking like it's taking a bite out of the sun. So this is a partial solar eclipse. Notice that the moon will not completely cover the sun and it'll move on. And even though we are speeding this up a whole bunch, it actually takes a few hours for this entire event to happen. Yeah, we'll loop it again and keep your eye on the clock up here. This starts just before 2 p.m. and then the ending time is, is about 5 p.m. on this simulation. And so for North Carolina, roughly 80% of the moon of, of the sun will be covered up by the moon in this solar eclipse. So it's, it's only a partial solar eclipse for North Carolina. And again, the reason is, is kind of like what we pointed out earlier, that very, very thin shadow only travels across a certain portion of the earth. And yes. I think we actually have a, a neat map to show you what that path is going to be for this 2024 eclipse. Yeah, so what you're looking at here, um, if you, you see a blue line going across uh, Mexico and the United States, that's the center line of the path of totality. So the path of totality is kind of that dark band arcing across the screen that's between the two pinkish reddish lines. So that's, those are the people in that path who will see a total solar eclipse. So you can see if you're looking for North Carolina, you can see that it's not in that path. We do get the partial eclipse. We get to see 80% of the sun covered up, but not the total. Um, and so if you wanted to see a total solar eclipse, you need to go where that kind of dark area is, but near that blue line between those two red lines. So you can see Mexico, part of Mexico, part of Texas, including some major cities, part of Austin, San Antonio, part of San Antonio, Dallas. Um, you can also see part of Oklahoma and Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, um, Kentucky, just a little bit, Ohio, New York, Vermont, Maine, you, but you wanna go to the right places in those states so that you're in the path if you wanna see the total solar eclipse. So April 8th, 2024. There are other solar eclipses before then, but this, this is the one I think is going to get the most attention. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, make your travel plans now. Um, I know that's um, 
now might not seem like the best time, but at least start thinking about 2024 um, because that'll be um, a big event, a lot, a lot like the 2017 eclipse. And Nick, we should probably mention just one more note about safety um, to watch a solar eclipse. Now during the moments of totality, it's okay to look directly because you're not actually seeing the sun, you're just seeing the corona. But when it's partial, so before and after totality, or if you only have a partial solar eclipse, you're going to want to get yourself some eclipse glasses. These are cheap um, and you have four years to obtain them and there'll be a lot more information about where to get these and how to make sure you have a safe pair that's been manufactured properly. And so I was just going to use Kelvin here, the North Carolina Science Festival spokesman, <laughs> to demonstrate. Kelvin is ready for 2024. Kelvin has been wearing these eclipse glasses almost continuously since August 21st, 2017 actually. Okay. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Um, you know, you would you would think that a partial eclipse, it might be safe to look at the sun, but it's not. It's like looking at the sun any other day. You don't want to do it without proper safety equipment. You wouldn't point your telescope at it without a proper solar filter. Um, treat your eyes like you would treat your telescope and make sure to, to keep them safe. Oh, that's a really good point, Nick. Yeah, it's very dangerous to uh, point binoculars or a telescope at the sun. Um, that would fry your eyeball. So never, 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 never point a telescope at the sun um, unless it is a solar telescope that's made for looking at the sun. It has a special solar filter properly made, properly attached. Okay, I think we might be ready to talk about lunar eclipses. I think we've got an image to show you all of what that looks like. So remember solar refers to sun, eclipse refers to being covered up. Lunar refers to moon. So a lunar eclipse is when the moon looks like it's getting covered up. There's only one thing the moon can get covered up by, and that's the Earth's shadow. So here's the question for you. Have you ever seen a lunar eclipse? And Nick, have you ever seen a lunar eclipse while I we're sure, waiting for people? I sure have. I've seen some uh, um, penumbral lunar eclipses, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I've seen some, some, some total lunar eclipses. So. Um, I have, I have lots of fond memories, especially of last January um, in Chapel Hill on the sundial in front of Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. Um, maybe some of you watching were out there with us, but we had a very, very cold time <laughs> late at night uh, viewing, viewing a lunar eclipse. Yeah, January 2019. Um, it, <laughs> it was, I don't know, 12 degrees or something. It was insanely cold. And 800 of you all <laughs> came out and joined us there. And it was, it was the best lunar eclipse I've ever seen, actually. Okay, oh, here's the answers. Oh, how interesting. So actually, fewer people have ever seen a lunar eclipse than had seen the 2017 solar eclipse. So only a, uh, just under half of you all have seen a lunar eclipse, and then some aren't sure. And I think that's especially interesting because um, when you get to learning about the geometry of these eclipses, um, you're more likely to be able to catch one of these lunar eclipses than you are uh, a total solar eclipse. Um, because for where you are on the Earth, you know, a specific location on the Earth, uh, the lunar eclipses are going to happen a lot more frequently. Yeah, so yeah, so like the eclipses themselves happen at about the same frequency, solar and lunar, but but like Nick says, um, more people are generally going to see a lunar eclipse because to see a lunar eclipse, all you got to do is be on Earth's nighttime side when the lunar eclipse is happening. And we have a, um, a picture of the geometry of a lunar eclipse. So again, this is not to scale. The sun is way bigger than that. Everything is much further away than you're seeing in this, in this image. But if you remember the other image, the moon was between the sun and Earth during a solar eclipse. In a lunar eclipse, the lineup is different. It's sun, earth, moon, and it's the earth's shadow that falls on the moon and um, covers up the moon in a sense. Although because earth has an atmosphere, the moon doesn't actually disappear. Earth's atmosphere um, bends and filters the light in such a way that the moon during a lunar eclipse usually looks this kind of weird shade of red. It can vary a lot in terms of the color. It depends on kind of what's going on in Earth's atmosphere, but usually a kind of a weird shade of red. It is unforgettable if you have seen one of these. And a lunar eclipse lasts for quite a while. It can last um, for minutes to hours.
Uh oh, it looks like we might be losing a little bit of Amy's audio here, but I think she was saying that the lunar eclipses uh, can last for minutes to hours. Um, and I, I believe we have a simulation of that as well. One thing I guess I wanted to uh, clarify here about this image is that it makes it look like the moon is going to pass through the Earth's shadow every single month. We know that it takes the moon one month or about 28 days or a month, if you like, uh, to orbit the Earth. But it turns out that it doesn't pass through that shadow every month. Sometimes it kind of seems like it goes above it or below it. So um, these lunar eclipses are still um, a little more rare um, than, than, uh, than you would think. But uh, I'll switch us over here um, while Amy is um, working out some of uh, some of the, the kinks over there to show you that um, there are going to be um, some visible total lunar eclipses from our location. So um, we might have mentioned this earlier, but this website, timeanddate.com, has a really, really robust uh, and useful eclipse setting. So um, you can use this too if you're interested in finding where these eclipses happen all across the earth. Um, and uh, we really encourage you to do that because it's been really fun for us to kind of play around in there too. Um, so we found one good example. Looks like Amy's back. Hello, Amy. Hi, I think I'm back. My computer was having trouble multitasking, I think. It happens. <laughs> it happens. You carried on, Nick. <laughs> of course. Um, so we're going to talk about this, this total lunar eclipse and maybe simulate that a little bit now. Um, you notice that there is a kind of cool chart down here that gives you the exact times, but I kind of like the video. Um, so let's play that. And maybe we can talk a little bit about what's happening. It even has a countdown, which I think is kind of fun. Okay. I don't know if my audio is working. You're but, good. Uh, it starts as a penumbral eclipse when the moon is in the faint outer shadow. It might be hard to see that. And then as it enters the umbra, the dark inner shadow, you start getting a partial lunar eclipse. And then you'll, it'll move all the way in and you get that total lunar eclipse. And that's when you might really notice that weird color. And then the total eclipse will last for a while. Um, and we'll maybe run this a couple of times and then it'll come back out um, and it'll become a partial eclipse again. You'll be able to see that Earth's shadow is curved, by the way, on the moon. And then it becomes a penumbral eclipse again. And the penumbral parts can be difficult to observe. Yeah, if you, if you have a really, really clear sky, I think you might be able to, or if you're really, really used to viewing the moon, um, you might be able to notice a difference in uh, kind of our regular old moon and the penumbral eclipse. Here it shades it in a little bit, but the big difference comes as it really passes into, into the Earth's shadow there. And uh, notice that that shadow is curved. This is evidence that Earth is round, by the way, in case you were having any doubts. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of the many pieces of evidence. Um, and it's kind, of, it's kind of just a fun thing to see at the same time. So if it can be a good teaching moment, I, I'll take it. And you okay, notice and this so, is pretty late night as well. I don't think we mentioned that. Um, if you're oh, yeah. keeping an eye on the clock, this is Sunday night, May 15th into early, early uh, Monday morning. Um, yeah, that's a great point because for a lunar eclipse to happen, the moon has to be full. Full moons are up only at night. So lunar eclipses, by definition, you will see only at night. Polar eclipses, by definition, it's got to be daytime if you're going to see a solar eclipse because the sun has to be up. So solar eclipses are a daytime event. Lunar eclipses are a nighttime event. Um, yeah. And this is not, uh, Nick, I don't know if you mentioned while my audio was freaking out, this is not actually the next total lunar eclipse, but it's the next total lunar eclipse with totality that will be um, visible for where we live. Right. Um, I didn't actually mention that, so thank you for, for saying that. Um, on this website, though, y'all, you can check out when the next ones are going to be, um, but this is, this is kind of our next really, really good one from right here. So I think um, we're almost ready to take some of your questions. Um, what do you think, Amy? I oh, think yeah. we are, although we have one final poll question that we hope you'll be, you'll be thinking about. Um, we like to collect data on how many people are watching. We know that some of you are, are watching uh, just yourselves looking at the screen. Some of you, there's more than one person watching the same screen on the same account. So we just want to collect some data on that. So if you can answer this question, please, about how many people are watching this program on your screen. So one, just you, two, three, four, or five or more. 
And if you can fill that out and then let's think about, let's look at questions. Oh, and um, Mickey has a, 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 a question about um, a website for the Eclipse animations. Um, if we could pop that into q and A. I don't know if everybody's going to be able to see that, but um, it's timeanddate.com is where we were getting those from, timeanddate.com. There are other sources as well. There's also NASA has an eclipse page, a solar eclipse page, and a lunar eclipse page as well. Oh, oh I see one about what is a hybrid solar eclipse. So um, hybrid uh, means that it can be, it can start out as like an annular, which we haven't talked about yet, an annular eclipse uh, and become total or start as total and go annular. Um, and I'm getting messages about my speaker not working. Nick, can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, so um, I do see uh, some other, an another good question that kind of has to do with safety, um, which is, is it safe to look at a lunar eclipse with just your eyes? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, it's really good to be careful and think about those sort of things, especially because you want to be extra safe during a solar eclipse. But remember that the lunar eclipse happens at nighttime. Um, so it's just like looking at the regular moon, which can be bright. You know, if you're using your telescope, um, you might still want to use a filter to make that moonlight a little less bright for you, but it is safe to look at. Um, and there's a question about what is an annular eclipse. An annular eclipse is a type of solar eclipse where the moon, it's kind of like a partial eclipse in that the moon doesn't completely cover the sun, but it leaves like a ring. Um, and it's because sometimes the moon um, is a little bit closer to us, sometimes it's a little bit further away from us. If it is further away, it's going to look smaller in the sky. And if a solar eclipse happens when the moon is a little bit further away than on average, it can't, it leaves kind of like a ring as it tries to cover the sun. And so you get this annulus or this ring of fire, sometimes it's called. So that's what an annular eclipse is. There is an annular solar eclipse in October 2023 for the US. It will be partial for North Carolina though. Really great question. And, and that's a good uh, lesson in how the moon's orbit is not a perfect circle. Um, so it, it is true that the moon uh, can be a little closer and a little further away and that's one of the times where you see the biggest effect. From night to night in the real sky, you're not going to notice um, the, a big size difference in the moon for that reason. Um, usually it's kind of like a horizon effect um, or something like that, but um, in, in the event of a, a, an eclipse, maybe you can tell a little bit more of the difference. I think that's a really cool lesson. Okay, any other questions, Amy? That's, I think that's all the eclipse related questions that I see. Um, oh, have we talked about why we don't have eclipses every month? Not exactly. I kind of mentioned that uh, when we were talking about lunar eclipses that it, it looks like the, the moon should pass through the Earth's shadow every month, um, but that's not the case. Um, so, so yeah. why? Is the moon's orbit is tilted with respect to Earth's orbit around the sun. So usually at full moon, the moon misses Earth's shadow. It passes below it or above it. So we don't always have a lunar eclipse at full moon. And at new moon, um, when you think, wow, why don't we have at new moon, when the moon is between Earth and the sun, why doesn't it cover up the sun every single time? Again, because its orbit is tilted a little bit. It usually passes above or below the sun and misses it completely. All right. I think that's that's all I see, Nick. These are great questions, though, friends. Um, I hope that this information is giving you a good uh, starting point to do a little bit of your own research on eclipses. Um, we we hope to be able to see you, you know, when it is safe, and maybe even do some uh, cool simulations. There's lots of fun eclipse simulations that you can try at home. So if you want resources for for things like that, uh, we want to encourage y'all to go to our website. It's www.moreheadplanetarium.org. Um, if you want more information about these sessions, you can look for Morehead at Home on those page on on that page. 
Um, Thursday, we'll be back with you at 10 a.m. So if you'd like to, to hear from us and ask us some more questions then, it should be really exciting. Um, but until then, check out our social media on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And we have a YouTube channel where uh, these videos are uploaded. If you ever want to go back and reference uh, this when you're learning about eclipses, there are virtual playlists. There's all sorts of fun uh, to be had. So um, like I said, I hope this is a good starting point. And we hope you've enjoyed the session today. So thanks for all your great questions. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.